Today the Trekkers are taking you to southwestern Virginia in the Valley and Ridge region, almost all the way to the Cumberland Gap. We're going to show you where those early settlers built a fort called Martin Station. But first we want to show you some buffalo that live right by Martin Station, especially since they're featured in the Trekkers opening. Yep, we filmed them right here. All right, so we've just been driving a little ways down the Wilderness Trail Road, and we came across some buffalo. Now, second graders, you know that the Lakota Indians, they would pack their teepees and go hunting for buffalo. That's what they did in the Grassy Plains. That's right, but did you know that buffalo lived here in Virginia as well? And I'm sure the Indians hunted them, but it wasn't the Lakota because Lakota didn't live here. We had the Monacan Indians who spoke Siouan, and we had the Cherokee Indians that spoke Iroquoian who lived in this region. And it was these Indians that often traded with the early settlers. All right, so here behind me you see an early settler trading with the Cherokee Indians. They were bartering, that means they were um, exchanging items that they both needed. So in this scene, they're getting along with each other. But as Alfonso's gonna tell you, they didn't always get along with each other. It hasn't always been that way. And a lot of the stories that uh, we've been sharing with you, it's always been where the Indians were capturing people. And it's always been where uh, they were in battle with the new settlers. But that's pretty much because the new settlers were coming into their territory. So they've been here for years and years and years, and now people are coming in and they're trying to build a new settlement onto their land. So it's understandable why they would feel the way that they did. Let's take a look at some of the things that they would trade. So Dave just showed you some artifacts from a uh, typical native community, and this is all made of the items they had for their natural resources. And if you come on over here, we can see when the settlers came in, what they were trading, what the Indians did not see, and for the first time, they see firepower in rifles. Now let's explore the grounds of this reconstructed fort at Martin Station. Now before Daniel Boone, there was Dr. Thomas Walker, and he was also an explorer in this area, and you'll see signs for him all along here as well. He promised land to the settlers who could come to this area and establish a settlement first. And so this guy, Joseph Martin, was in a race to get here first. He arrived two weeks before the other people and, set and put some buildings up here and started farming. Unfortunately, the Indians attacked and he had to leave before the crops grew. But he came back and in 1775, he established Martin Station right here. And Alfonso and I are gonna take you all around this cool place and show you what it might've looked like back in those days. All right, so here's the beginning of our journey into what we would see in a outpost camp in around 1775. Here's a typical house that you would see. You can see it's just made out of wood, log cabin style. And we're gonna venture off just a little bit to see what kind of other buildings were included in this small community outpost. So boys and girls, the polite thing to do when you're visiting somewhere and there's a horse is you should have a special little treat for that horse, like an apple or some sugar cubes. But unfortunately, Alfonso and I aren't, weren't prepared for this. So he's just gonna eat my Trekker shirt. <laughs> Is it, do I taste good? Ow, ow! <laughs> Besides man-eating horses, there were also vicious sheep at this place. Bob bought black sheep heavy any wool. Well, that's an old story, but here we do have some sheep and the wool was very important back then. So they would shear these sheep and use that wool for different things. And they might've even traded it to the Indians as well. The sheep here at Martin Station are not very friendly. They just chased me into the fort. So it's not, wait. So now thanks to the sheep, I'm inside the fort and I wanted to pan the camera around and show you what it looked like inside this fort here at Martin Station. We're going to explore some of the different buildings. Alright, well this was a fortified fort and it sure was because it was tough to get in. We did manage to get our way in. You saw Dave getting chased by the sheep. And uh, we just panned around. We'll talk a little bit about the items from each place. But basically it was just like a little village inside of a small little space. 
and it would really only come in here when it was necessary. A fort was like if they were being attacked. So they have houses in here where people can live if they're under attack, but usually the people would live on the outside of the fort in the houses like we showed you earlier. But when they had to come in, they had a place to sleep, uh, places to cook, places to uh, hang out, a little bit of yard space here to, uh, you know, to children to play a little bit over here so they could survive inside the fort. Here you can see behind me an example of what the fort may have looked like. It was just like that house Alfonso showed you, made of wood, and then they put mud in between the cracks to keep the cold out. Now if only I could show you what it looks like inside the fort. Well, it is a pretty well fortified fort because we can't go up there, we can't get in here. So. Pull, pull that handle, pull that latch. <laughs> Alfonso figured it out. He had to pull a latch. See, I didn't know how doors opened back in those days. So here I am inside the building that Alfonso showed me how to get into. And you can see there's a nice bed here. There's a, a desk for studying. And of course, in those days, they didn't have heaters, so they have a fireplace. And Alfonso also figured out how to get into the top part of the fort building. What would I do without you, Alfonso? All right, so here's the top part of the building, and they had several windows. This one leads straight into the fort, because this is probably where the lookout folks were to see if any Indians were attacking. So they opened up. Ready, ready, we have an Indian attack. Get ready, post. They come over here, then they have other soldiers coming in this way. They grab their rifles. You see little holes right here, just little, because they don't want um, any arrows or anything coming in. So they take their rifles, they start pointing right there, and then they would take the Indians out. But it wasn't all about fighting here. So just like in any other community, we have children. And children, of course, always have to play, because that's the important part of growing up. And you can see some games that they played, and one of them I noticed was the hoop. So they would take another stick, and their job was to try to bat it. And try to see how far they can go. That's loads of fun. And of course nowadays, you guys know how that, and you would hoop. Well, these are kind of hard to do that with. <laughs> now we're going to explore some of the other buildings inside the fort. Oh, hey. Well, I came across the blacksmith area and I decided to make myself some tools. I was looking around, they had things like hooks and rings, uh, things that they would need to hang their pots over the fires. They would need things for their horses, keep on their reins and their, uh, and their horseshoes. There's a bucket for when it gets really hot. I would just dump it right down in there. It would cool off. Of course, I needed to make sure I stoked the fire because I had to have a really hot fire to soften up the, the metal, the steel to come over here to my anvil and start working again. This is a cool place. It took a very fine artist, a very skillful person to work this area. Now you guys think your bedroom is small? Come take a look at this small bedroom. There's not even enough room for Alfonso to come in here. But what we have is a bed and this person was lucky enough to have some furs to keep him warm in his bed. And we have my desk, and we even have a place up here for somebody else to sleep or for some storage. So an important commodity for those early settlers was furs, animal furs, that they would trade and barter with. So as you can see, there's some really cool bear furs here. Well, we talked about the sheep, you know, the ones that were chasing Dave. Well, they were very important. Remember, I mentioned earlier that they would shear them and they would even trade them, where well, they keep a lot of that wool for themselves and they would come to the spinning wheel where the women would make things like rope, because rope was extremely important at that time, and they also make some different items for uh, some thread to keep their clothing together and also just to make clothing in general. Well, I get out the front. Dave's going to try to come back from the back side, but remember that's where the sheep were. So I hope he's going to be all right. I hear the sheep already. Can they bite me? Come on, lead him out that way, Alfonso. Oh gosh. <laughs> I escaped the vicious sheep. 
So we just took you to the fort and we showed you kind of what the fortified fort would look like. But if you notice, the houses were just kind of small. They didn't have any windows because it was pretty much a protection area. Behind me, you would see a more typical kind of house that was for a family dwelling. You can see it actually has glass windows. It has a porch where people sit outside, um, a fireplace, etc. And we talked about how the fort was only used under attack. So that's where everybody would run. But outside the fort, they had their regular houses like this. And these were the ones that those people lived in that we've been telling you about, the settlers, that the Indians would come in and attack and take their families captive. So our visit here at Martin Station is over. We hope you've enjoyed taking a tour of all the cool buildings and seeing what those early settlers, how they lived here in the frontier of Virginia back in the olden days. And a good time to visit is in the month of May. They always have a reenactment here of where the Indians attacked. They build a building and catch it on fire. And it really highlights the conflicts that those settlers had with the Cherokee Indian. Oh. <laughs> Well, Alfonso left, the lights on, the heater on, everything on basically, on the Trekkermobile, and now look what happened. <laughs>